education, and real-world knowledge about the voiceover industry. It's the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Experiences, right? Yeah, you're one of those veterans. Um, <laughs> welcome back to the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. I'm your hostess, Linda Bruno. Very, very happy to finally meet Miss Jody Kringle. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I've seen you like out and about. I've seen you like you've been interviewed on a lot of podcasts and gone on a lot of like various, I don't know, your name is 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 around. We'll put it that way. In okay. A good way. In a good way. In a good way. In a good I'll way. take that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of cool to be able to finally meet you. And thanks for coming on my little show here. Well, thanks. I love your show. I've seen several of the episodes and I really enjoyed them. Thank you. We get a little yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. Um, a little silly. That's okay. That's that's the point. That's fun. <laughs> I, know, I know. I feel like there are so many great podcasts out there with wonderful information. Sometimes it's nice just to keep it real. And we talk about the BS and oh, the yeah. problems and the hardships that so many of us have to go through. Sure. Um, but um, what are you drinking? What are you drinking today? Uh, I'm drinking coffee with a, a little bit of pumpkin spice, just oh, a little bit, nice. because there's always time for pumpkin spice. <laughs> I, I don't care whether it's Christmas or not. Doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah. You love your pumpkin spice and your <laughs> I, I matches. Do. I mean, yeah, well, great. yeah, it's an audio branding cup. Yeah, very, nice. very, very nice. <laughs> this is 19 it. ounces. I am serious about my coffee. Oh my gosh, it's a big cup. That's <laughs> yes, great. Yes, it is. And yes, now, does it, it is. go cold? Do you like it cold? It does get cold, but you know what? Eh, yeah, I don't care. I'll yeah. drink it anyway. <laughs> gotta heat that bad boy up. I'm <laughs> drinking unsweetened green tea because it's too early in the day to uh, have tequila. Ah, um, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be responsible. Okay. But um, yeah, so audio branding, so interesting because I, you first you're gonna have to explain everything to me because I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything about what you're talking about. So tell me, tell me, tell me, what is well, that? Well, I'm gonna give you the definition that the International Sound Awards define it as because they're kind of the people who got this thing started. I mean, they're one of the many people. There are a few people, but they started the International Sound Awards, I think, in 2009. Okay. Um, so they define it as a brand sound that represents the identity and values of a brand in a distinctive manner. And that's the audio logo, branded functional sounds, brand music, or the brand voice. Mm -hmm. And that's all a part of audio branding. So it's a, it's a large umbrella under which there's a bunch of sound assets that are owned by a entity. Oh, interesting. So now mm -hmm. you were a singer. You started off mm -hmm. as a singer yeah. before you became a voice actor? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> By okay, a long okay. shot. Yeah. <laughs> so you were yeah. a singer. I was reading and you sang blues, jazz. What? What's this? Yeah, mostly blues and jazz. And I mean, I was doing some pop when I was a kid, but you know, we all do those things when we're kids. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So like did you perform in clubs and stuff? Oh, no, no, I was never really a gigging musician. I'm more of a recording artist kind of deal. Um, I have one gig that I do on a regular basis in Atlanta with a nine piece band <gasps> called Play It With Moxie. And uh, that started in, uh, I want to say 2005, something like that. Huh. So before I was in voiceover, but uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's just a lot of fun. We have, we yeah. just have a fun, a lot of fun, but it's like one performance that I do once a year that's and it. that's it. Yeah. You're like Barbara Streisand, she does like once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. Yeah. No, not quite like that. But, uh, but yeah, for me, the, the, the point was never to be a gigging musician. The point was to perform in front of people that I want to perform in front of. And the the group of people that I perform in front of are are geeky fan people like me. That's so cool. yeah, it's a small subsection of music called Filk, F I L K, which is the music of science fiction fantasy conventions. Oh my so gosh. it's I know, it's like super niche. 
Wow. <laughs> and and a lot of the stuff that we perform as Play It With Moxie is part of that music genre. So things that have to do with science fiction and fantasy or media or television, that kind of stuff. Books, you know, that are related to that. But a lot of the stuff that we perform is like squirrel nut zippers and, you know, uh, uh adele you know like we've we've done some yeah like it 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 runs the gamut there's a whole bunch of different stuff that we do but it's a lot of fun i have always enjoyed it stand for something it's an acronym acronym no actually i think it was a typo that they did on a stencil in the 70s it was supposed to be folk (laughs) at a science fiction convention so it was at like a science fiction fantasy convention and they were doing stencils to tell people what was happening in certain rooms and there's always been this tradition of music at these conventions where people would gather in a room sit around in a circle and kind of do the campfire thing right so they'd all play music with each other at each other you know people would contribute with whatever instrument they had available etc and people were writing songs about the things they were interested in in the science fiction fantasy community right yeah it's it's long it's long and storied and i got involved in 94 so i've been involved for a long time (laughs) you don't realize these pockets of creativity Mm -hmm. that are out there um because you don't you don't hear about it but wow there's a lot but there's a passion there you know, obviously. I am a geeky fangirl from way back. <laughs> yes. But now you were singing before you decided to pursue voiceover. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was raised with that. Do, what made you want to do VO? Uh, I originally, um, and I, I know that you've talked with others who have done this too. Originally, I volunteered my time at the CNIB, which was the Canadian National Institute for the Blind. And I didn't know what voiceover was until I volunteered there. So 95, 96, I was reading magazine articles onto reel to reel tape. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was my introduction to voiceover. And I loved the tech as much as I loved the, the voicing. I thought it was all a lot of fun. And just that was kind of where the bug bit, but I didn't really end up doing anything voiceover related until many years later because I was doing SEO and internet marketing for many, many years. So because of the music, I had a songwriting website online called The Muse's Muse. And I did that from 95 until about 2016. Oh, wow. And yeah, it was this really large resource. It was kind of my baby on the internet when the internet was young. Mm -hmm. And I promoted that on a dime. I had no money to promote it. (laughs) So I learned how to do it on my own. I learned about how to make the internet work for me and then ended up employing those uh, tactics in order to help clients. Mm -hmm. So that's how I became a self-employed person. That was my first foray into being self-employed. And in 2007, I got really bored. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, I'm one of those people where things tend to happen when I get bored. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I kind of thought, well, now's the time. You know, I've been thinking about it. It's in the back of my head. I always wanted to do it. Why not just do it? And one day I put a website together. I certainly knew about websites (laughs) and uh, and just switched my focus. So one day I was in SEO and internet marketing and the next day I was in voiceover and I just went and learned as much as I possibly could. And at the time that meant message boards. (laughs) Message boards, yes. Yeah, do you remember Julie Williams? Uh, her yes. message board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was where I really got my start. That was where I learned how to do whatever I was going to do. <laughs> and that's where I met all of the people that were really instrumental in my early years as a voice actor. So yeah, I, I mean, and you loving like the technical part too, that must be an, a bit of an advantage for you as a voice talent. It's like an added, yeah. an added yeah. thing you can offer clients. Well, it certainly helps. It's not so much that I, offer that to clients necessarily because i'm i'm kind of at the point now where i'm doing the voicing and actually getting someone else to do my editing because you know it it just saves me time and and i know people who can do that in a quarter of the time it would take me so why not pay them for it (laughs) exactly exactly yeah 
So do you, is it an equal love, you know, the voiceover and, you know, all your other interests as well, or does voiceover stand out? I, uh, you know, voiceover does kind of stand out. Uh, not that I don't do my creative outlets elsewhere as well. Yeah. I just, like, I just love everything about voiceover. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And I enjoy doing what I do for my clients and being part of the audio portion that they put out into the world is an honor yeah. and a privilege. And I love doing it and I love understanding what I'm contributing to. So that's kind of where the podcast came from. And that's kind of led into the podcast. So, you know, I, I, I love it all. It's just, yeah. yeah. So now for regular Joe and Jane, a voice talent, how is a uh, voice branding of like helpful for us? Well, for us, I would say it's more education, knowing what you're contributing to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as a voiceover brand is concerned, audio wise, the market is going to tell you where you fit. Right. Really, that's what's going to happen. So your branding on your website can follow whatever the market tells you you fit into. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing for people to know right off. You know, in a lot of situations, people would tell you, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't pigeonhole ourselves, you know, we shouldn't right. be in a box. But, you know, my advice about that is, if they put you in a box, that's a great place to be. Yeah. And, and, that's you know, awesome. at least they know that's where awesome. to put you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then after that, you can get them to consider that you may be able to offer them someone something else. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for you to get in front of them that way than it would be to entice someone from the very beginning when people think you're one way and all of a sudden you're trying to market yourself as another way it's contradictory it confuses people uh, i think that in a lot of instances regular audio branding can inform voiceover about audio branding in general because audio branding works best with consistent repetition like advertising does right? Mm -hmm. So if you tell people who you are consistently and repetitiously, right, and then suddenly decide to change that mm -hmm. <laughs> in a public way, then it's going to be confusing for people. So you're going to get people to remember you. The trick is to if you want to get into another genre, or you want to do other things, the trick right. is to sort of sneak in there. <laughs> yeah, somehow. Yeah, I know I have students that come and they're like, well, how do I know what I should pursue genre wise? And, you know, I'm for a coach, I try to throw as many different scripts at them as possible, give them a chance sure. to try things to see, because heaven knows, I didn't know I knew and I had in my mind what I thought I wanted to do when I started mm -hmm. out. Um, but it wasn't until auditioning. And like you're saying, the market tells you it was dependent on what I wound up booking to go, oh, wow, I guess I'm pretty good at promo. Yeah, that only comes in time, you know, with the market telling you, yay, you're, you're good and bookable at this and uh, sure. maybe not so good at that either. But yeah, the pigeonholing thing too, that can be tough. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, it's especially like, if you're in a place you don't want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mean, I know with agents too, it's easier for them to just go, okay, Linda, you do this read really well. You're a PNG yeah. voice. Great. You know? And then it's like, yeah, but you didn't know I do character voices too. And then they look at you like, what you do that mm. too. Um, but you know, it happens. It's interesting though. Um, That's why people get different demos, right? right? The demo will at least tell people what you can do and what you can do well. Okay. And so, so yeah, if you can pass a, a good character demo onto the agent that thought you were only in commercial or promo and they like it, mm -hmm. why not? They're they're there to champion you, right? That that just makes them money. <laughs> right. So true. So true. So you think that basically the talent figures out with the bookings and the market response as to what uh, they fit for. So do you think that their branding then should then, you know, uh, go down that road as far as like, um, like your colors are all, you know, the burgundies and the, the pinks and everything. Mm -hmm. What is that? What does that say for you? What is that? What are you portraying with that? Uh, for me, uh, first of all, it's kind of an unusual color. Uh, in that I don't see a lot of other people using this particular color. So for me, it is a little bit of a difference. Um, mm -hmm. And I just like standing out a little bit. But it is truly me. 
you know, I, I've settled on, I wear this color a lot. <laughs> uh, I, it's a color I love. It's part of my daily life. It is everywhere around me. So, you know, in that sense, it, it, I'm just putting me out to my clients so that they understand who I am. And that's really what branding is supposed to do, right? Right. Uh, it, it lets people understand who you are in a really quick moment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what I, I think it's good for. Uh, you know, I, I think you settle on it over time. It's one of those, like, I've, I'm 15 years in at this point. So, you know, I, I, I've kind of settled on my thing, but it took a while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it takes time, right? Like, for, for students, for people who are just starting out, I would say, do everything. Yeah. Do anything you want to do and see where you land, because there's nothing wrong with trying new stuff. There's nothing yeah. wrong with trying anything. And that's the beauty of being a performer. Exactly. You can play. Of doing this is yeah. to be able to have fun and let yeah. go. And um, especially if you're very cerebral and you're in your head all the time, it's like, no, throw it away. Mm -hmm. Let's just yeah. have a good time and be goofy. You mentioned improv on your website. So you're a, a, an avid fan and participant. Uh, you know, I am an avid fan of uh of D and D, okay. <laughs> and so in that sense, I do my improv on a regular basis because I'm involved in a number of different games, and on a regular basis that requires improv. Well, However, cool explain the D and D to me. This is role playing. Yeah, it's in role game. playing. Okay, in game. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a games master who's bringing you through a particular scenario, and you are collaborating with three or four other players, let's say, and you all have to accomplish a goal. And you are playing a particular character while you are accomplishing that goal, whatever wow. it happens to be. So in that sense, you are role playing as whatever character you're in, and then you're role playing that character in whatever scenario you've been placed oh, into with other people. So it becomes a collaborative role playing experience and you're improving through that whole thing. <laughs> so, now, are, you, are you doing this online? I have done that actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm um, involved in a group called Diced Thespians that gets <laughs> together on Twitch every Tuesday evening. And uh, so that is one, but I'm involved in, I don't know, three or four or others that are, oh, you know, sure. happening every other week or every week or on the weekend or, you know. And it's just, it's so much fun and you get to be a different character every time and they all have different motivations and, you know, and, 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 right? <laughs> so much, but, such great practice for you. It really is. It's a lot of great practice. That said, I'm not an animation video game audio book kind of talent. So that's not really what I do. However, it, it does help me understand how I could get a motivation for whatever I'm doing. So uh, I do think that improv is a great thing. I don't necessarily think that it's improv classes that make it a good thing. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm not saying don't take improv right. classes. If you want to take improv classes, right. and it, they work really well. I'm just saying there are other scenarios in your life that could double as improv classes. D&D oh, <laughs> &D &D being one of them. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm a, a huge fan of promoting improv. Um, mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to work for a comedy network. So every day sure. is a different thing. And that's my practice, you know? Exactly. Um, yeah. 10 minutes ago, I had to play a translator for, you know, Putin, <laughs> you know, they just fired the stuff. And then I had to play a woman who was excited about a, a Ford car that takes off. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of thing is what I try to encourage people. And like, if you can find any kind of avenue, sure. anything, especially if it's fun, then it just helps that muscle grow. Yeah. Um, and then that way you're more comfortable because it's, I feel like that's the biggest issue people have is they're just like, they're self-aware. They're just like, they're self-conscious. They, they're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to sound stupid. And it's like, you can't do anything stupid. You can't do yeah. anything wrong. You know, this is just you as a performer. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Let the, you know, let it fly. <laughs> this is fun. This is what the whole point of why we got into this business. Yes. You yeah, know? definitely. Yeah. That's what I encourage people to do. So what yeah. do you think is the toughest part about being a voice actor? Ooh, um, you know, often I think it's getting more jobs. <laughs> 
I think the marketing can be the hardest part. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, I honestly, like, I love the voicing. That's the easy part for, for me, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, not that I didn't have a bunch of coaching and still get a bunch of coaching. Not that I could, you know, can't stand to learn more. I could definitely learn more. I'm always learning, but as far as continuing in a business and running a business as an entrepreneur, I, I think that the constant influx of business is definitely, that's the hard part, you know, keeping the business going. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, keeping track of everything can be really complicated too. It depends, you know, it depends on what like you're doing. A favorite app or website that you use on a daily basis that helps you with your business? Well, I use Zoho Books for my invoicing oh. system. So I have a whole ecosystem around that. So the CRM is in there and all of that. Although, to be honest, I very rarely use the CRM. Really? <laughs> I'm like horrible that way. <laughs> but I do check my invoicing system and understand where the money is, what I'm owed, um, who hasn't paid, mm -hmm. uh, how old invoices are. When was the last time I heard from this client? I can pay attention to that and understand what's happening Zoho with that all the time. Lot. Zoho yeah. offers a lot of things. I think I they was do social media aspect for a while. Um, but yeah, I know they have a CRM and, and mm -hmm. I have not checked out books, but I wasn't sure. You know, I always like to get find out what you find is the most valuable thing that helps you makes your job easier. Well, you besides know. that, Gmail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. sir, the snooze function in Gmail is a lifesaver. <laughs> I don't think I've used that. How do you, it's do you really, well, okay, what, what happens with me is that I need reminders on a constant basis. And so if I snooze an email until the day I'm going to need it, and then it pops into my inbox, and my inbox is fairly clean because I've taken care of most of what's in there, mm -hmm. then when that unsnoozed email appears in my email at eight in the morning, the next, the day that I'm going to need it, I know exactly what I need to do. So, okay. so when it comes in, you hit yeah. snooze and you can define the period of time. Yeah. I can say when I want it to come back to me. So okay. I can answer, like if I'm on a podcast, for instance, or I have a podcast interview I'm doing with someone else. I exchanged an email with that person, but I'm not going to need it until March 22nd when our actual uh, time to meet is. So I'm going to snooze it until March 22nd. And then on that date, it appears in my inbox and I know, oh, I have that interview coming up. Now I have my calendar as well. That's, right. you know, but that seeing that email on that day means I can go through the thread and familiarize myself again with what we talked about and all of the things I'm going to need to know when we get on our call, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things like that are super awesome. helpful. I have to check that out. I, cause I use Gmail as my main yeah email provider. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have not explored that yet. So this is something new. I highly recommend it. Yes. Yeah. yeah that makes very sense. helpful. And it also beats having to dig through to find an email yes. to reference something again. Um, yeah. So we get so many emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Definitely. My brain is yeah. like, I was just um, talking with someone else about this on the podcast uh, about I use Nimble for my CRM. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the overwhelming factor of it, because, you know, when you've been in the business as long as we have, it's like you just get so many contacts and I'm really terrible at follow up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very lazy about it. So I know, you know, I took a Mark Scott class on it and it's helping me get organized, but I'm using the workflow pipelines to try to keep me organized with, okay, contact this person, when to follow up with them. Um, because if you just tackle it from like staring at this huge database, Mm -hmm. half these people aren't in business anymore some are dead you know it's like <laughs> and to go through and call the the dead leads is just forget it I'll just I'd rather yeah. you know pull my brains out than that yeah so. yeah that's why I'm so bad with CRMs because it's very yeah. overwhelming but as things come in if I keep track of them with email then I kind of don't need to do that yeah. so 
I mean, I, I still could be a lot better at reaching out to my clients after the fact or leads after the fact. Definitely. Do you do follow ups or do you do? Are you... Very rarely. Oh, right. <laughs> really, I'm bad at it. I really am. Uh, and I know I could be better, but there are there are only so many hours in the day. Right? <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like the two. I'm like, I feel like the day just goes. And as we get older, it just goes faster and faster. Very true. Yeah. So it hmm. really is not good. I remember you were a kid and it was like the summer, you couldn't wait for the summer to start. And it was oh. like time would drag. <laughs> and oh. now it's like you blink and like two months have passed and you're like, what the heck happened to my last two months? Very true. Yeah. yeah. Things go a lot faster. <laughs> Only gets worse as you get older. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, my eyesight's getting worse as I get older. Which oh, is no. Terrible. Well, yeah. you know. <laughs> I know. I'm I know what that's about. I've had bad eyesight since I was eight, though. So <laughs> Me as well. Like, you know, what are the Coke bottle glasses when I was a kid? But now I had a patch. <laughs> You had what you had, had a, a patch, patch. because oh. they were trying to train my lazy left eye to work oh. better <laughs> so, oh, no. as an eight-year-old kid can you imagine oh, oh yeah 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 that must oh yeah rough. that was rough yes <laughs> oh, my God. i know growing up is can be very tough when kids are cruel. oh yeah Kids oh, are- yes. <laughs> Talk about being the ugly duckling. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think of all the things that I hate losing the most as I age is the eyesight aspect because having to switch glasses or because I wear contacts, I mm-hmm. had tried the bifocal contacts. I don't know. Something happened. My eyes got worse. So now it's like, okay, you get to choose. Either you can see traffic signs or you can see your phone. So it's like yeah. you an option. And I was like, well, I'm going to pick traffic signs because I don't want to be driving, yeah. not be able to see stuff, but there's a very difficult, there's no in between. Yeah. I'm in the same exact situation as you. I do have like bifocal contacts. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't wear contacts all that much anymore because I just don't like, I'm not socializing as much as I was in person. <laughs> and when I'm on at home like i i'd rather just wear my glasses and my glasses have like you know several options and i can just lift them up if i need to see something really close so for you healthier well glasses i i may i hope so (laughs) my ophthalmologist says she's like you gotta get contacts out yeah because apparently your eye starts to to uh change shape because you have the contacts in too much yeah I still have contacts and I will wear them on occasion when I really need to, but I like the, the, the glasses have become another accessory in my branding, to be honest. Oh, interesting. Because they're burgundy, right? Yeah. I don't know if you uh-huh. can tell, but they're yeah. like, right. So, so do you it's make just, sure you're wearing them in pictures and everything. Do you try and keep it all consistent or, you know, I would now, <laughs> but <laughs> the pictures, pictures. I don't yeah. see this is on some of these pictures. The pictures that I have are now, I think, three years old or something yeah. like that. So, I mean, pandemic, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to tell you how old my headshot is. It's oh, I won't. I won't even tell you. But yes, yeah, get it. So you understand, yeah. So if I went and got pictures taken now, probably I would get them with my glasses. Yeah. That's cool. I probably would. Yeah. So how did you discover that, that that should be part of your branding? I had to wear them and (laughs) I liked how these looked. That was really it. (laughs) Good. I'm going to keep these. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that was it. They suit you. You have a good face for glasses. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I'm telling you that when you, when you logged in, I was like, you have a nice aura, a nice glow around you. And it's because of all your branding colors. That's really really important. Hopefully people can watch the video on this so you can see Mm -hmm. what we're referring to. Mm. Um, But um, just an interesting perspective. So, okay. We have, we started off as a jazz blues singer, but we don't do gigs. We do one gig a year. Yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I've we, done an album, but I did the album um, over the internet in 2015 with a friend of mine in the UK. How so, explain that? Well, uh, I've known him since 1999. He's someone that I've known through the filk scene. <laughs> yes. um, he he is a fellow named Chris Conway. So if you look at chrisconway.org, he is one of those consummate musicians. He makes a living as a musician. He's been 
only a musician for like 30 plus years. And he is one of those people who's a musician you love to hate because he plays everything really well. In fact, he mixes, he masters, he does like his own CD covers. Like it's, it's insane how, how talented this guy is. And, (laughs) and we've known each other a really long time. We met through the Muses Muse originally. And then I introduced him to Filk and he's been a part of that for a while. And in, 2015 was pretty much when it was possible for the two of us to make a collaboration online work well enough Mm -hmm. that it was easy for us to exchange files and get, you know, wave files and MP3s back and forth. And, you know, looking at the perspective from now and understanding how easy it is to get really large files back and forth, no matter Mm -hmm. how the distance is, right? Easy now not so easy back then right you know it took a little while for that to be a thing and so he would send you he you got he would compose something or you would compose together or we did some stuff together we composed some stuff together Uh, he wrote songs i wrote songs we brought them all to each other he did the backing tracks I'm a vocalist, that's the only thing I do. So I can't play any other instrument and he had to play everything. So he would put the backing tracks together, send them to me, I would send him the audio back and then he'd mix and master the whole thing. So yeah, so the sending back and forth was really the key that we needed to be able to send those large files back and forth easily. And it Mm -hmm. took until 2015 for that to really be, you know, easy. Okay, so now here's the next question. What's your what's your FTP of choice? Uh, right now, I'm using WeTransfer. <laughs> Me too. I love yeah, it. I do love it. And I have the pro so that I can have my branding on the, yeah, it just makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, back then, I was using uh, Dropbox, actually. Dropbox, yeah. And I still have Dropbox. I just don't use it for my clients. Yeah, I feel we transfer is a great uh it's not that expensive if you pay for the year. Yeah, not at all. And yeah. then everything stays nice and consistent. And then it's like, oh, you have an email, you have files from or the fact now that you can copy a link mm-hmm. and send it in case somebody has uh, you know, the email reject- doesn't get to them. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that's super helpful. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Wow, making an album over the internet. Uh, yeah. It's all due to the pandemic. Oh, no, this was 2015. So oh. this was way before. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, it was on my bucket list. It was one of those things that I really wanted to do. And I love singing. I just don't have any desire to be a gigging musician. That's never mm-hmm. been my thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoyed doing it. It was a lot of fun to do. I, you know, it's, Musicians have a really hard life. I got to say, it's hard to be a musician, especially now. And I talk a little about that on my podcast, too, because it's really difficult for musicians not just to get an audience, because even if you have an audience, you can be poor. (laughs) You cannot make a living. Right. How can you support yourself as a musician? Yeah, it is super wow. hard. So I, I I feel for musicians and I, I talk with people who license music, who uh, help musicians make a living. I'm about to talk with someone who's talking about the blockchain and helping musicians make a living, oh, wow. which I think is really going to be interesting because it's like making a community, but it's a community that is very involved and that can actually support you, wow. which I think is something musicians need. This is, it's, it's something that really needs to be talked about more. So yeah, I, I never had a desire to be a starving artist. That was never my thing. And in fact, I don't think starving artists should be a thing. I really don't. I know. And it does exist. It it totally does, but it shouldn't. This is why you do voiceovers. Well, exactly. Yes. <laughs> you fund your <laughs> your singing passion and your D and D passion. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I can be creative in the voiceover. It's just a different kind of creativity, which right. I I love. I like being behind the scenes. I don't mind doing that at all. So you don't have interest in animation or video games or anything? None. <laughs> none. I what just don't. Just no. Just out of curiosity. Because I want to be paid. <laughs> because so many people want to do animation i totally get it and i i understand how much fun it can be i i totally get that but 
I don't want to be a starving artist here. Here again, we're getting back to that, right? Mm -hmm. I, I love what I do because I get to be creative and my clients pay me well for what I do. Right. And, and, you know, what is it like you can do like a four hour session for something like $250 for it's animation? Amazing. Like it, it's yeah. nuts. Like no. why? <laughs> I know well, people glamorize it and they think it's going to be, I'm going to be a cartoon character. Or something. I mean, if you're right. in the Simpsons, if, if you're in the yeah. Simpsons, sure, right. you're making buck, but like otherwise. <laughs> I know. Well, video you know. games are so tough on the voice. Yes. Too. With yeah. all the reactions and the screams and the the fighting and all that, it's like totally it's yeah. a shredder. A complete and I, I understand how people love it. I do. I, and if it's your passion, by all means, go for it. I'm not here to say don't. Uh, I'm just saying it's not my necessary passion. And if it's not a passion, why do something that's going to pay me $250 for four hours? <laughs> exactly. I look at it like, why am I going to strain my voice? And yeah. then pretty much block myself out for anything else for the rest of the day, because mm -hmm. I know what these babies can handle and what they sure. cannot. Um, I used to sing a long time ago and did mm -hmm. theater and stuff, but I, I, I know my limitations <laughs> and it's, it's very important to me. Like I have to do something for the comedy network and they're like, Oh, I don't scream anymore. Um, they'll usually get us, you know, a sound effect screen, but they'll say, Oh, you're going to have to do something really loud. So I'm like, give it to me at five o'clock. When I don't have to do something for someone else or match audio, yeah, thing else, because um, you have to take these things into consideration. Oh, definitely, yeah. And I mean, in my career in general, I have my what I call my pain in the assometer. <laughs> and and if something is going to be a giant pain in the ass, I am charging top dollar for it <laughs> because uh, if they say no, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell a nephew charge. <laughs> And if they're willing to pay it, then, then okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah. Singer, how do you take care of your voice? Do you have any special things that you do when you start to get a little? Honestly, no. Just uh, warming up a little bit and, you know, singing and just starting off the day with a little bit of a song. That's about it. You know, I, I can I tell you, I hate warming up. Yeah. <laughs> it's so boring. Yeah. I don't I do anything special. Different. I really don't. And in, in fact, there are probably times when I don't warm up and I should. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, uh, when that's I was probably younger, bad. I could roll out of bed. The voice would be crystal, crystal clear. Everything would yep. be wonderful. And now it's like, yeah, no, it takes about three hours for the sinuses to drain and all the gross oh, stuff wow. that happen. Yeah. 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 Everything I'm up and running again. <laughs> Like yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that uh, sinuses are usually not a problem for me. Um, oh, throat true. clearing can be a problem for me. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, which, yeah, <laughs> I mean, everyone has something, right? <laughs> That's supposed to be really bad for the throat, too, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it is. My uh, vocal teacher tried to teach me how to throat clear backwards. That's I don't interesting. Know how, yeah, it was something that she was taught because she's like a she was a singer in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't figure it out, but apparently there is a technique <laughs> and you cough somehow backwards. So that way it doesn't, oh, I don't know. This is not my area of expertise. Well, coughing might be better than clearing your throat. But... True. Cause I guess you're trying to get the phlegm out, mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's causing the coughing to happen. <laughs> Usually. Yeah. And probably drinking coffee with cream is not a good idea. <laughs> no, 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 no. Usually it's not. So tell yeah. me about your podcast so people can visit your podcast. Sure. It's called Audio Branding and the subtitle is The Hidden Gem of Marketing. So Ooh. I talk about what I deal with on a regular basis. So I mostly work in commercials and corporate narration mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I do the odd um, documentary and in show narration type stuff, but that's, you know, kind of an exception to my, uh, five minutes of finished audio or less rule. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, that's, that's my general rule. So, uh, there's that. And then, um, you know, the, the podcast talks about how sound influences our buying decisions, but also our daily lives. So I do some solo podcasts that are usually between five and eight minutes long, and they're kind of essays that I speak as podcasts and use different um, links in my show notes, which are basically a blog mm -hmm. that links to videos and things like that, that demonstrate what I talk about. Mm -hmm. And I interview people as well. So I interview 
pretty much a whole wide spectrum of people who work in sound from casting directors to creative directors to people who do content marketing to people who do branded podcasts to people who have audio equipment that they have developed wow. to uh, medical people who are talking about how the beeps in hospitals are killing us. You know, there's all wow. sorts of, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. ASM artists, like I've, I've talked with people who do ASMR and what that entails and, and why they got into it and, you know, public speaking and all sorts of really interesting topics that are all about sound. It really does cover, it touches a lot of different areas out there that you don't think it about. It really does. Yeah. I think mostly I want to talk about how important sound is in our lives. And I think part of why we don't give it the due that it deserves is because it's in our background all the time. Mm -hmm. It's behind us all the time. We hear it. We just don't pay attention to it. And often as voice actors, and I'm sure you've experienced this before, we're brought in as the icing on the cake or right. the bow on the present, right? Yeah. And they haven't given any thought to it before putting that into their production. So there was no thought that went into the creation of that audio before we were brought in. And I, I just think that their production could have such a better impact if they thought about the sound that they were doing before the project was almost done. I find it helpful when we do get the rare audition that sends you a video file with the music underneath it. Oh, yes. That then is super like, helpful. Oh, wow. Now I'm yeah. going to completely read this differently than I thought that, looking at the copy. Exactly. The, the sound, the music gives you emotional context. Yeah. So that's what sound is. If you think about it, watching a movie... If you turn off the sound, you'll understand what's happening in the movie. Right. You'll get the plot. You just won't care. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's emotional. It, you don't have that emotional connection. Yeah. There's there's nothing telling you how you should feel as you watch that. Right. right. The music, the sound effects, they all give you that context in in order to let you immerse yourself in what you're watching. Like I will cry in commercials. <laughs> I'm awful that way, but it, it's the sound that does it to me. You know, the the heartfelt music on this ad about a father giving his daughter a cell phone as she goes off to college is, you know, it, it's not the act of the father giving the cell phone that gets to me. It's the music in the context yeah. of what's going on on that screen, right? That gets me bawling. <laughs> <laughs> it totally makes sense though. Yeah. Yeah. I've done I know that um sometimes to get myself in the mood for an audition, if I know where they're going with it, I will take a piece of, you know, off of audio jungle or something and I'll pop it in underneath and read to it just to try to get more into whatever place I'm thinking that they're going. I have a whole folder of music like that that is various different types of emotional context yeah. that I can use to put in front of an audition. Yeah. And it works wonders, especially as musicians. Like it, it, it just gets us right there. So true. So true. Yeah. It's kindred spirits. <laughs> I'm so happy that I got to meet you finally. Yeah, and, likewise. Uh, chat about everything. Um, this has been great. So they can check out your podcast. Give me the name again. Sure. It's Audio Branding. And do you want a URL or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me a URL. <laughs> sure. It's audiobrandingpodcast.com. Okay, cool. I'll put this stuff mm -hmm. in the show notes as well. Sure. Um, what about your website? That would be voiceoversandvocals.com. Oh, very. And that's your, okay. That's your whole umbrella. That's the thing. whole umbrella. For the yeah. Singing for the voiceover, everything. Yep. Yay. Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> thanks again for joining me. This was very informative and I'm sure our listeners are going to get a lot out of it. Thank you but so much for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the voiceover gurus podcast. Thank you, Jody. It was an absolute pleasure and uh, we have a few workouts coming up in the month of April that you'd like to join us. Alyssa and I are doing two workouts a, a month. And um, yeah, come and explore your creativity and find that true authenticity in your performance. Head over to voiceover.guru to book a workout or to start some coaching with us. We always love to hear from you. 
That's it. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry. Learn more about us and get coaching at voiceover.guru.